Hi everyone, Tristan here with SUV RVing and today we have another rig tour for you. This is a 2003 Chevy Suburban Z71. We're going to meet up with Thomas and he's going to give us a tour of his rig here, of his setup. And he also has a unique product that he sells called the Sport Keg and we'll have him talk more about that later. And uh, let's turn it over to Thomas. Okay, hi. So yeah, my name's Tom and um, this is my 2003 Suburban. It's got the Z71 package which gives you the locking rear differential, skid plates, and a really heavy duty roof rack. It's got 230,000 miles on it. And the reason I like it is independent front suspension, so you get a little more clearance in the front, and it's a little more comfortable to drive if you're on the freeway than sometimes Jeeps and uh, solid front axle type vehicles can be a little, uh, they get the death rattle sometimes, but uh, oftentimes they're just not as comfortable a, of a drive. They're, they're made for more off-roading. Now this one isn't as capable as a Jeep off-road, but especially once it's been modified. But it gets me everywhere I want to go, gets me back to the, in, into the uh, areas where most campers can't go, which is why I'm out here all by myself. And I wanted a Suburban because I like the, um, the lower profile and the gobs of space that it has in it. I, I think I was inspired a little bit from uh, Suboverland, actually, seeing how he, he uh, uses his for camping. I've got curtains, and the way I did my curtains is um, one continuous piece of paracord that goes all the way around. Uh, it hooks to, uh, to the bungee cord in the front, and that keeps tension, just the right amount of tension for me. Um, on there. So these are felt material from the fabric store and I just made my own curtain hooks out of uh, uh, paper clips. So these are all paper clips. Uh, they go in, I, I cut them at a sharp angle so they made a sharp edge and I poked them through and then I turned them around into a circle like that so they can't come off and I just loosely put the other end on there. So these go out that way. And then this one, this side of it goes all the way forward. Um, I also have one for the back and they all tuck into one corner or another. So I don't, I don't even have to have like little ropes to rein them in with. So this one comes, slides really easy. And to get this one up out of the way, I, I just, there's a gap in the trim and I just stick the edge in there and that holds it up. But it lets you get a breeze, you know, as opposed to the ones that are stiff and you stick them in your windows, kind of wedge them into your windows. It makes a hot box in your car. So I'm a full air guy. I mean, if it's 35 degrees outside, I'll probably have all my windows down. I've got these, um, these just happen to fit perfectly. So I picked them up at Home Depot. They're window boxes that you plant plants in. So I put a little screw here and a little screw there, wrap these little miniature bungee cords around and that holds them in place and it's just more storage. And I can still access the storage underneath that came with the truck. So I got extra lighters and things underneath there. And so that, and it just fits and it doesn't block the view. So if you are just hanging out inside the, inside the truck and you want to see around, you know, you don't have a solid wall of plywood cubby holes. Inside here, I got a hat and gloves. Um, that's my favorite little light. It's a solar powered inflatable light for inside. I use it all the time. I've got extra cordage and some, you know, scissors, just that and the other. This, this is a food safe funnel I use to fill my kegs with. This mattress I just bought um, from Joann's Fabrics store. It happened to be on sale. They were 40% off. It's five inches thick, six feet long, and two feet wide. And two feet sounded kind of narrow. Uh, for, I thought maybe a little narrow, but it actually works fine. Um, I can put these long pillows on either side that kind of work as wings for the, for the mattress. And also these pillows go up against the refrigerator, which normally rides between the seats up front. Well, just the, the, just the nose of it goes between the seats. And I lean up against that with these pillows 
and my little light and I can read. It's just a sponge. It's not memory foam or anything. It's just this. I think it's the world. This is the size sponge you need if you got a Suburban and you want to wash it fast. <laughs> so, and over on this side, I've got more. This is my bathroom stuff side. I, I don't keep it on the same side as my water filling. So I got this Clorox wipes, a bottle and bags. And the bags work with the folding toilet seat. These wipes, I used to like these when I was backpacking because you don't have to worry about keeping them dry. You have to worry about keeping your toilet paper dry. You don't have to because they're so already wet. Uh, these are my books I brought along for reading. I got a forager's guide to wild foods. I wanted to see if I could eat something out here. So I got a two by four with a hinge that holds everything up. Now this isn't fully loaded uh, with all my stuff. I've got my table is out, my chair is out, the, all that. But it all fits in. Um, table, I turn it upside down so the concave side is up and I can put some of these little boxes sort of in it like, like that. But the, the, t the whole platform is supported by these kegs. This is a five liter keg and it's full of water. Um, that purified water and this is how I bring my water instead of having a five gallon plastic water container that you have to find room for this is doing the double duty of not only storing my water but it holds up my platform so that I can store all underneath no I don't have the slides to slide out uh, but I don't find that I need it you know it's not hard to slide you know it's like kind of easy anyway and once everything's in place, while you're driving around, nothing is sliding around because I very cleverly took up all of the square inches <laughs> underneath here. Up front, you'll get a better view of this in a minute, but I made a frame for the front. Um, the second row seating has a wheel well, I mean a foot well, and it's a little deeper in that area. So I made this uh, frame and it's got adjustable legs so I could get the height just exactly right. That's where I keep my spare tire. I don't want to keep it under here because if you have a flat and you're off-road, it could be difficult to get it out from under there. Personal care items in here, you know, mouthwash, body soap, shampoos, stuff for my beard, my whiskers. There's tools, wrenches and stuff. The farther back in you go, the, the more or the less frequently I anticipate using them. So that would only be in the case of a breakdown. So there's two toolboxes. There's an empty backpack in case I want to go backpacking. The coffee thing's got my tea making in there. I'm going to get a little stick, like I got some sticks, and put a little hook on it so I can just go in there and just pull them forward when I need to. But it's not hard to crawl up in there if I had to reach something that's deep in there. Everything is less than this height or multiples like when the stove is closed this pan sits on top of it and this is the pan i have for you know soap and some other things i've got a cast iron skillet in there can opener cutting board hot hot mitt so that'll sit right on top of the coleman stove and still be under this height. So this is a four by eight, a full four by eight sheet of plywood. I think they, you know, at Chevrolet, the engineers built this around the idea of being able to pack a four by eight sheet of plywood. So it's four by eight, but I cut it at, a, I think 26 inches back and put a piano hinge. So this isn't completely raised. It's only, it's, it's broke back kind of raised. I'll, I'll, you'll see it from the other direction. If I didn't have it, cut then when I lift this I have to lift I'm lifting the refrigerator my wood stove and a few other uh, sort of heavy items I didn't want to have to bench press all that so that's why there's a part that that doesn't come up but when the back is down you can raise the front if you move the stuff off off of it and you need that's my emergency that's spare tires spare tire jack recovery equipment um, all is in in that area there you'll get a better shot of it but stuff I don't have to use on an hourly basis while I'm camping okay so I made this frame now this plywood will swing up all the way you don't want to cut this part too long 
because then it then it'll interfere with the roof and you won't be able to swing it all the way back what i'm saying is i think this is 26 inches um but if it was much higher i wouldn't be able to swing it and leave it up and in here is the spare um it's full size spare just like all the others same size um jumper cable. this is all emergency stuff i got a a torch, jumper cables, a gallon of antifreeze, heater hose, heater hose clamps, tire repair. So propane, some more extra clothes because I'm just I'm just worried about running out of clothes, I guess. And um, no bags of hardware. I got a bunch more of these little clips. You notice I don't have my refrigerator horse down to the deck, and I haven't needed to because I don't go airborne often. Um, not Dukes of Hazard style, so I, so far it stays planted. As a matter of fact, I put furniture sliders under it so that I can move it around. They're the felt ones, not plastic, because that's too easy to move around. But I got the furniture sliders on the back, so it moves fairly easy when I want it to move. And so I haven't actually applied these straps to anything yet. Everything stays put just under normal driving, because, you know, I don't do anything really rough with it. I got a couple of blocks to go with my floor jack. I got a, a floor jack in here as to, to use to change a wheel with, but it's not tall enough, so I have blocks that uh, sit and get, get me up higher. So this is the frame I made, and it's got adjustable legs. Right here in the end of this is a um, bolt that I just screwed into the bottom of it. And I, however I screw the bolt up and down, adjusts the height of this platform so it matches exactly with my keg, keg legs. <laughs> so that goes back down and uh, all back to normal again. Camp shoes because I can't stand like having to lace these boots up every five minutes when I'm in and out. I've got my shepherd's ax here just in case I need uh, a walking stick and it also fits like this to help things from falling out I got a little tool kit here a mini tool kit I got a bigger tool kit this is all full of sockets and stuff it's kind of heavy I got some laundry and I brought more clothes than I need that's a air compressor so if I wanted to air down tires I can air them back up again um, this is my buddy heater this is a cooler that goes with my kegs we'll, we'll talk about later an insulated cooler for that um, I brought Viking chess with me in case I ran into somebody who wanted to play. And my garbage bag is there. Okay, so uh, this is the back passenger. I got my S-Wing. It's one piece of steel all the way to the end. Uh, you can't beat that. So it's worked really well for me. I've been hammering the heck out of the back of it. I, I usually set the blade on the edge of the wood and then use another piece of wood to hammer down on it rather than swinging because what happens when you swing and I did this yesterday, I actually caught my finger. But I'm glad I didn't have a full swing going <laughs> when, the, when that happened. I got an um, experiment that I've started, and it's going to involve the wood stove, which we're going to talk about later. But I've been led to believe from some other hints and clues I've gotten that if I set my wood stove right here, and I put this triple wall insulated thing that I made myself, I can get the stack to come right out this window and straight up and have a wood stove, which is a great ambiance. I'm telling you, the, the, the light that it gives off and the heat and the sound and everything, it's got it all over the buddy heater. I'm sorry, it just does. So Winterwell is the brand I got and I, so I ordered the extra 45 degree pieces for the chimney. Uh, there's one here and then there's one there. And then I went to uh, Home Depot and I got this adjustable uh, elbow. You can rotate them around and, and change the degrees. So I got them set to 45. And then there's a 5-inch piece connecting those two. And if that's not enough, I got a 6-inch piece with this little finger adapters at both ends to wrap around that. And it's all designed to let air. So it's going to sit on the stove. This is going to sit on the base of the stove on the cooking surface air is going to be able to come into these holes and a jacket of cooler air will surround between the chimney stack and this heat shield 
and it'll naturally want to move upwards because it's hot and it'll keep a constant airflow between the two pipes and if that's not enough I've also got the same effect with this you can see it's not closed off so there's a jacket of cooler air surrounding in between the layers and this this heat shields was going to sit on and I've tested that at home I've tested all this except I haven't actually put the stove in the truck yet to do it I'm really cautious about it so I'm testing and testing and testing I got one of those uh, uh, laser beam thermometers so I can shoot it and see how hot anything's getting you know if it's getting too hot I can immediately take action and I've got uh, whoops laundry everywhere I got a fire extinguisher it's going to sit on that but with the legs folded in sit straight on that now even with the legs folded in there's still a, a little gap underneath there so it's the belly of the stove won't be flat on here there's still a, a way for air to get underneath for it and then right over here I have a heat shield Right now it's doubling as protection for the side of my refrigerator so grease doesn't get on it. Um, but it's going to go here. And I just made this out of the material you can buy at the hardware store. So the stove will sit in here. Got a heat shield this way and that way. The windows, there's two windows on it. One will be facing that way and one will be facing that way. So I've got glass to see the fire. And I expect it's going to be really nice. So if you can picture the stove here and a pipe coming out through the door. So this is a winter well uh, view. It's the large size. Um, stainless steel. It's specifically made for outdoors camping and that. I loved it last night out under the stars. I had uh, a view of the wood burning on this side and in the front. This is how you control the air coming in. It has three positions, like no air, a little bit of air, and more air, or wide open throttle. Um, this opens up to feed the wood in. Uh, the tool is a great little scraper. You can get your old stuff in. And what's really neat is there's no lip on this, just no lip right here, so all your ashes come straight out without having to scoop them from a, under a lip. Uh, the neat thing about it is it takes firewood, that's the whatever length you normally get your firewood in. You get your firewood comes in this length. You don't have to cut this in half. Again, like some stoves are so kind of small, this will actually fit in all the way. As well, all of these pipes, the chimney pipes, you don't need any tools. They just slide together. This is the uh, spark arrester. Just wiggle it out. It goes back in this way. And all of these, whoops, once you take the wood out, all of these fit in there. So you can put them all, put them all in there. They'll all fit and the door closes for, for transport. So it's got folding legs. And when the legs are folded in, it still has like little stubby legs. So when I have it in the truck, if I ever get brave enough, um, when these legs are folded, there'll still be air be able to pass underneath it to keep from scorching the wood under. Now I've already tested it. Um, I took just a piece of plywood and folded the legs under, put my little heat shields down that you saw over there, laid it down, put this right down on the heat shields and uh, had a big roaring fire in there and I used my little gun and they were not hot at all. Didn't scorch the wood, didn't turn it brown or anything like that. So that's just one of the test steps that I wanted to go through to make sure before I put this in and have to call the fire department. It's got these little wings where, you know, you can dry your socks. Uh, you can, you know, put bread or, you know, other things you want to keep warm. You can cook on this surface, you know, boil water. If, uh, if you want flames directly under your kettle, you can open this lid. I cooked a cheeseburger on my cast iron. I had a cast iron uh, pan here and it cooked. It was a little slow. I had trouble with my wood last night. It was kind of wet. But anyway, we eventually had a good fire. You can fold these together and 
use this as a as a way to pick it up and move it. Now, I've actually even want to put gloves on because this will be hot and this will be hot. Um, but you can, if you're very careful and you keep good control of it, you can pick this up and gently move it around or turn it. Okay, so moving around the side uh, here, we've got the BF Goodrich mud terrains. And these are 295, in case you're wondering what'll fit, 295-70-R17. Uh, I didn't have to do anything to raise the back. I do have a leveling kit that raise the front. I have heard, very occasionally, I've heard a little bit of a rub coming out of this uh, rear well uh, against the plastic liner, but it's so infrequent and so minor, I haven't felt a need to address it. But uh, that's the size that I used here, and I'm really happy with it. I can roll over all these rough, rocky surfaces without worrying about a sidewall puncture because they're 10 ply and they're not loud i was expecting a real noise but uh I, I hear them a little bit at around 40 miles an hour but once you're up at the freeway speed it's the sound just goes into the background you don't even hear it the leveling kit is real easy to install on these it's just a matter of putting keys in i'm sure you can look that up i got a bumper with a winch i'm a little uh, cautious about getting stuck um in in north West Arkansas where I'm at there's a lot of muddy trails and you may have to winch yourself out or winch out a friend you know that and I do have a tree saver which is the big fat belt that you put around a tree so you don't hurt the bark of the tree so you can pull out that way or hook straight up so I bought this bumper yeah it looks kind of big but uh, it's it holds my winch which is a 12,000 pound winch so it's kind of big it also, it's, it's not the steel cable, I, it's an upgrade to not get the steel cable, it's, it's the, I'm not sure what the material is, but it's more of a fabric, super strong rope type material. So I'm real happy with that, uh, recovery points, super heavy duty. I don't have my fog lights in yet, so that's still a work in process. The whole thing's a work in process, it always will be. So I get some fog lights in there, I do have a light bar to put across here. It fits across, but it came on such short um, brackets that I can't reach into my engage my winch. So I'm going to get longer, taller brackets. I have to fabricate them myself so I can still get my hand under. This is how I take showers. Um, just pump it up. This just has tap water in it. I, I didn't bother to. I mean, but it's as tall as I am, and so squirt like that it also is you know my source for dishwashing water and that kind of thing and anytime you want to spray something off it did come with a long wand with the sprayer on it and that's back in my um, in my window box back there um, planter box I can screw that on to make a fine spray but I haven't found a real need for that so I just leave it off so there's a tarp I've got it uh, just bungee corded to the roof on top it's a little bit wide on this end, so I got it kind of hangs down here. And uh, go to your local garden center and see, because a lot of times when they buy their trees and stuff, they come attached to this uh, little bamboo pole, and they're giving them away for like a dollar a piece. So I got a, a couple of those, and it just fits in the grommet up to this little joint on the bamboo, and it comes down there and stops. And then I've got my bowline right on top of that. And then I tied it to a rock because I'm not even gonna try to pound a stake into this. And then I got another pole here, just sort of holding up the tarp so that it doesn't hang down and too far. And uh, put up some lights, great nighttime effect. I mean, it's festive and all, but it also, I figure that white light is made up of all the different colors of the spectrum. So if you got all those different colors, you got white light, so it's all kind of like natural lighting and it works out anyway. So this table has adjustable height legs right now that's set on the lowest, which is the easiest thing. And it's, it's a low working height for standing, but if you sit, it's the perfect working height. So this is a neat little side table to have your, you know, to have your cup and, you know, whatever food and what have you. And you can even cook from this position, but I'll probably get fat just for saying that. It seems like such a 
oafish thing to do. This is my refrigerator and I, I got a little something inside here that some of you might like. So inside I have eggs, steak, ground beef, cheese, uh, pepperoni, but also this is a this is my keg in action here. This is uh, filled with my local uh, breweries uh, stout beer, and this is what I sell. Uh, I have uh, a gas pressure here, so that's CO2 I just connected. There's no way oxygen can get in here, because as soon as I take it back home, it'll come with this, this cap on it, take the cap off, screw this into its place. There's a little bit of foam right at the neck, so when you're screwing it in there, you're not trapping any air in it. It's, all those little bubbles of foam are just carbon dioxide anyway. So that goes there, and then uh, the faucet goes in the middle. It's a quick disconnect, like that. And then out comes beer at that end. See, I don't want to waste it. And so it'll stay fresh. It's, it stays cold in here. I also have a cooler with ice packs, which you can refrigerate or freeze if you want. If you need it to stay cold all day, you, you might put them in the freezer. And so what this does is it just wraps around the keg once it's inside the cooler, and the cooler's insulated, you get two of these with a four, with a four liter. So that's gonna stay cold all day. Um, but since I have a refrigerator and a, a lot of people camping these days or overlanding, what have you, have their refrigerators. But if you're not, if you're fishing and you don't have a refrigerator with you in your canoe, um, or if you're golfing, um, uh, having fun on the tubes, you know, uh, floating down the river, um, you want to use the, the cooler. So, it goes in there. It just happens to fit. This is a uh, Iceco JP50, and the height is perfect for that. It just won't accommodate this, so you have to pull, just pull that off out of the way. I keep everything refrigerated, um, even so this beer that's in the hose doesn't uh, get hot or spoiled. And then it just all, you just put it all in there, like that. And Ice Co's refrigerators come with this outer cover, which is good because I'm starting to get some sun on this. Typically I move around to keep the, keep the shade uh, working on my, on my behalf. But so far, we're good, 34 degrees. Okay, and then so when nature calls, I have uh, this measure, oops some bags caught up in there. So these are the biodegradable bags for this purpose. They, and I find that they're good quality. They don't leak or have any holes in them. So there's that. It just folds out. Boom. And then the bags, sometimes it's hard to get them to stretch this far to go all the way around the outside. But they have these little rails inside that you can also slip the plastic through and pull it front and back that way. But I prefer the bags that are just big enough to, that they just go all over the top. And then you can just sit on it just like that. For privacy, which isn't a, a concern, uh, right here where we are, This is there we go. You can oops, I'm not open yet. There it is. This you can just uh, guy it down with these, or I've just used rocks and kind of put them on the put them on the corners just to weigh it down. This is like really cheap on Amazon. And so, go inside. It actually has a towel bar right there. So you can hang towel, towels there. And a pocket for your 
shampoos and soaps and that. You can open up. You'd be surprised how fast it gets warm in here. It gets warm in here pretty quick. So you were nice enough to put in a couple of vents so it doesn't get instantly hot in there. And then you know what I do? Like if I'm taking a shower, you could either like just wear your sandals. So these rocks are murder, but just take the floor mat out of your driver's seat, front floor mat. I got a carpeted floor mat, just put it in there. The water is not going to hurt it a bit. Just hang it up on the front bumper or off the side of a tire. It'll drain, the water just drains right out of them and they dry really quick. But then it's so luxurious. Taking a shower on carpet is like a, you get the bottom of your feet really clean and uh, it's just a new experience. But so, yeah, you do all your bathroom business in there. Changing clothes, like changing clothes when you're trying to, you know, laying down inside the SUV can, can be a challenge. So just change clothes in a place where you can stand up. Um, nothing's better. But I think it goes like this. And, oh, I know. You got to curl it all in the There it is. That's the floor. Actually, it comes with a floor too. And tent stakes and ropes and all that. Okay, so I got the Jackery 1000. I chose it over the 1500. The 1500 is bigger and heavier and it comes with four of these. But it's really close to twice the price of the 1000. So I reasoned that, well, maybe I'd get another 1000 eventually and two more solar panels go with it for about the same amount of money but first I have the opportunity to see if this just suits my needs the way it is and that the 1500 isn't really overkill for my for my use if it wasn't satisfying my needs then I can always go back and buy another 1000 and have two more solar panels and have for about the same amount of price of within not a lot of money as you would get uh, the 1500 in the four panels, you'd get 2000 in four panels. I can tell right now the utility of having two jackeries would be that while this is charging, my refrigerator would have a jackery on it and I can exchange jackeries. Right now I'm bouncing back and forth the jackery to, over to the fridge to charge, to, to operate the refrigerator. And then when I feel like it's cold enough, I come back out here and plug it in to get more charge. Uh, for, into the jackery so it's a constant back and forth so two jackeries would have that advantage of being able to do both now there's pass-through charging they say you can do it in the instructions for the jackery where you're you're charging and at the same time you're plugged into something but they say it will hurt the battery life that's in the instructions so that's why I don't do it that way it's either charging or it's powering something, not both at the same time. So here at Quartzsite, finding campgrounds, want to get away from it all, trying to, you know, find that peace and quiet. And I pulled up to this beautiful spot, surrounded by um, mountains. But the fire pit, whoever was here last, um, man, that is not cool. I cut myself on glass when I was a kid. That's kind of why I do sport keg, because hopefully you don't bring glass into recreational areas. I cut my foot when I was a child, I had to get five stitches, and anesthesia did not work. The local anesthesia did not work, and I felt every bit of it. It was a horrible experience. So you get plastic in here. There's a, this for a glass bottle cap. So there's broken glass all in there. There's all kinds of metal and melted aluminum. It's a mess. I'm going to clean it. I'll clean it out and take this all back in. There's a refuse place. I found a muffler it's over there. I'm going to take that with me. Um, you know, this is going to be the centerpiece of a group of friends, a gathering. I mean, do you want it to be a trash pit? You know, do you want it to be a dumpster fire? All right, well, thank you, Thomas, for sharing everything about your rig here. And uh, again, go check out his website. Is it sportkeg.com? Yes. Sportkeg.com. And uh, I'm not a beer drinker, but you saw his, his water jugs in there. Uh, that's how he carries the water that he has with him on the road, uh, holding up his, his bed platform. And so even if you just want a super durable water container, uh, I think it would be a good 
good fit for, for you. So go check out his website. I'll put a link to it in the description. And uh, Oh, and, and you, they, they are single walls, so you can heat oh. up your water in them too. That is cool. Yeah, you could put it on the fire, put it on, on your wood stove here. And any, any final words, any parting words of advice for the people? Thank you for coming and, and doing this uh, with me. And I really appreciate your time and attention. No, just get out there and enjoy it. You know, it's, it's not an adventure if there isn't some, you know, worry involved. And uh, nothing was ever written about the, the meek and timid. If you guys have any questions, leave them below and we'll, we'll try to answer those. We'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.